now we will understand the industrial growth trends in india right so since independence india has witnessed various stages of industrial growth so now we will study about those stages broadly we can understand uh, the growth of uh, or we can say trends in growth of industry in three sub categories or three sub stages so first stage is initial phase that is between 19 during 1950s and 1960s Uh, good morning students welcome back to pluto science all right today is our 49th day and today we are going to study about the industrial sector right so as you all know this is uh, this is the very important sector we can say uh, in the all the sectors of the economy and it is also holding a lot of importance due to various reasons and uh, from the point of view of examination also so not only for the prelims if we see mains so you can expect lot of questions or we can say one to two questions from this uh, segment that is industrial sector right so there are some smaller topics in this like uh, trends in the growth especially the manufacture uh, in the industrial sector the component of Uh, manufacturing sector it is very very significant in previous classes also we have seen that so the growth in the manufacturing component that uh, becomes very very important we have also discussed that india is unable to uh, achieve uh, we can say incremental growth in the uh, within the industrial sector itself the manufacturing component so we are uh, we have failed to achieve incremental progress in the manufacturing sector so we, there have been lot of efforts uh in the by the government to increase the component of this sector however the results are only meager still we can uh, we can say the manufacturing component is kind of stagnated within the uh, in the overall economy right apart from that there are topics like msme micro small uh, micro medium and small enterprises this is also very very important aspect uh, we are going to study about this one also so in this way and also there is a balance of trade so all these topics we are going to cover in the next classes so in this way not only for the prelims but uh, from the point of view of mains exam also this is a very very important topic so we try to focus and learn some in for important information from the topic right so industry let's try and understand what is industry first right so industry it is also known as the industrial sector so alternatively we call it as industrial sector also so it is one of the three broad sectors in an economy the three sectors we have understood the agriculture sector next one is the industry third one is the service sector so alternatively with minor differences we also call them as primary sector secondary sector and the tertiary sector so generally the names will be used alternatively for the primary for these three sectors in the economy so the industrial sector it comes i mean it is a sector that is between the agriculture sector and the survey sector right so generally the sectors are classified into three sectors those are primary secondary and tertiary sectors industry correspondence to the secondary sector which involves the manufacturing and the processing of raw materials into goods so there is some uh, minor uh, we can say differences so mining and quarrying mining and quarrying so it is part of the primary sector but when we consider the agriculture sector it won't be part of the agricultural sector it becomes a part of the industrial sector but when we see the nomenclature of primary sector secondary sector and tertiary sector it becomes part and parcel of the primary sector and not the secondary sector so they in this way there is a brief differentiation between uh, 
when we see the classification of industries so try to have a uh, try to remember the small differences also scope of the industry if we see in a broader sense it encompasses wide range of production activities such as uh, production of uh, films finances etc so there is a i mean differences in classification we will see that differences also some of the experts have opined that certain sub sectors they should go into the another sector but some other experts feel that no they should be there in that particular sector only right so however so the focus is on specific industries within the industrial sector like i said the focus if you see the secondary sector the focus is on uh, manufacturing sector and also there are certain six, uh, sectors like uh, refineries refining and the cement so we will see we call those specific or important industries as core sector or core sector industries we are going to study about them also right so now we will see the classification of industrial sector so for the purpose of calculation of gdp and to better understand the industrial sector further it has been divided into sub sectors right so we will now try and understand those sub sectors all right so earlier i have said there is lack of consensus about the sub division of the sector the sectors also and the way to whether to keep them under the primary sector or the secondary sector or the uh, tertiary sector there are still debates however there is a brief uh, consensus and uh, the secondary sector or industrial sector it has been divided into four sub categories uh right so despite the lack of consensus in general practice uh the, it is promoted by organizations like united nations it involves uh, four main sub sub sectors in the industrial sector those are first one is mining mining and quarrying so this involves the ex extraction of natural resources we have already uh, studied this extraction of coal extraction of uh, the uh, bauxite etc so extra extraction of metals coal oil and the stone quarrying everything will come under the mining and quarrying sub sector next it is the manufacturing we can say it is the most important sub sector in the industrial sector we can say not only for the industrial sector uh, uh, after the we can say lpg reforms and after the we can say mostly after the world war 2 this particular section has become very very important in the all the sub sub sectors sub sectors of the economy including agriculture sub sectors and the service sub sectors because it has the potential of transforming a country from a developing country to a developed country so here uh, this sector manufacturing sector propels a country from we can say underdeveloped country to a developed country lot of things are involved in not only it provides for we can say uh, not only it contributes for the gdp improvement in the gdp but there is a lot of scope here to employ large number of people employ large number of people who are semi skilled or less skilled so he, in this way this sector contributes uh, immensely in the poverty elimination poverty elimination and also this sector will help in addressing the unemployment issue unemployment issue because the salaries will be meager and more and more people can be employed here so the wage distribution is better here in this sector so in this way we can better address the problem of poverty and unemployment so because of all these reasons this sector becomes very very important uh, the sub sector of manufacturing it becomes very very important right so generally here the transformation of organic or inorganic substances into products finished products that thing will happen right so that will be happen either mechanically or chemically or through assembly so right examples of this sector include food and beverage production textile manufacturing chemical production metal working 
machinery manufacturing and production of transport equipment so these are the examples of manufacturing right so remember just remember that it is the most important sectors not only in the industrial sector but also in the entire economy right next sub sector is electricity gas and water supply right so it includes activities related to the generation transmission and the distribution of electricity manufacturing and distribution of gas and the collection purification and the distribution of water resources right the next one is construction subsector so activities related to construction of buildings both residential and commercial and the civil engineering works such as roads bridges sports irrigation works etc so all these will come in the, come under the construction sector right so differences are there in classification right i have earlier also told so there is lack of consensus in putting a particular sectors in the uh, three sector three major sectors of the economy so economists like simon kuznets and colin clark they have uh, different uh, different of opinions uh, about the classification of certain activities for instance kuznets includes transport and communication in the industry while clark uh, clark categorized construction under services right so there is in this way there is a difference of opinion in the sub sub sectors however you try and focus and try and remember these four sub, sub sectors in the uh, industrial sector all right so now we will see the major industries in india uh, what are the major industries are there and briefly we will also see the distribution of those industries and their importance early in earlier classes also when we were discussing the geography topics we have seen the major industries uh, based on the classification made based on the raw material consumed in that particular industry however here also we will briefly survey the major industries in a, in our country first one is the iron and steel industry right so special attention attention was given to the development of iron and steel industry immediately after the independence immediately after the independence because it is one of the basic industries the raw material for other industries uh, to make the heavy machinery uh, that will be used in those particular industries the raw material comes from iron and steel industry only so immediately after the independence the importance most importance has been given to the iron and steel industry right so large scale in the plants were established we have seen at the places like roorkela bhilai etc right so in the public sector the places like bilai roorkela and durgapur while private sector plants also have been established like tisco and uh, isco was the was in the government sector tisco tata iron and steel uh, uh, company <coughs> so it was uh, established in the private sector whereas isco like industries were established in the public sector next another important industry especially immediately after the uh, independence one of the most important industries was jute industry now uh, we can say nowadays its importance has been declined but uh, uh, during that time during the independence and just before and after independence this industry was also playing an important role so it is the one of the oldest industry in, industries in india prominently it is prominently located in west bengal so after the partition major jute growing regions went to bangladesh uh, as a part and parcel of the uh, partition of the country whereas most of the jute industries that have been remained in india so because of this reason we had to face a lot of problems all these juice uh, uh, jute factories or industries they became sick and they are uh, they have uh, they have starved of raw material so they have there have been lot of problems akin to this uh, particular problem because of the partition of india the jute growing areas that went into bangladesh whereas the industries that are remained in india right right next is textile industry so it is the one of the largest modern uh, industries in india 
so contributing it is also contributing significantly to industrial output employment and exports so we have studied in detail about the uh, cotton and textile industry in india when we were discussing the geography topics similarly another most uh, another uh, i mean important industry in india that is sugarcane industry it is established initially in uh, bihar and uttar pradesh but later subsequently it developed in state uh, states like maharashtra andhra pradesh and karnataka tamil nadu we have also see the factors or reasons for the spread of this particular industry in the southern india in states like maharashtra andhra pradesh karnataka and tamil nadu right so most of the sugar mills especially in tamil nadu regions like uh, sorry maharashtra in states like maharashtra they have been established in cooperative sector right next another important industry that is cement industry so it uh, the first industry started in madras in 1904 it operates mainly in the private sector right so significant contributions have been made by the mini cement industries with the major plants located in several states next another important uh, important industry is the engineering industry right so in the after or during the second five year plan many of the important uh, significant investments have been made in the engineering industry uh, focusing on heavy and capital goods industries right so both public and private sectors are involved in this sector next another important industry is food processing industry so uh, now india only minor part only 10% of the products or uh, food produced in india is processed so it is a india is a major producer of uh, but accounts a small percentage of uh, if when we see the international contribution and also only up to 10 to uh, 10 to 12% of the food production in india that is that undergoes processing so there is a lot of scope for india in india for uh, developing this sector also right next one is small scale uh, and cottage industry so these industries play a crucial a crucial role in india's economy contributing significantly to manufacturing value added gdp and export so this small scale industry also plays very very, very important role when we study the msme sector we will understand more about this small scale and cottage industries right so these are the major industries that are there in india now we will see about the core sector so earlier also i have mentioned there are some core industries which act uh, which are very very important when it comes to the economy of india so there are eight core industries they are referred to as the core sector because they are considered fundamental or essential for the overall economic development of the country right so they they provide crucial inputs and infrastructure that support the functioning of various other sectors so because of all these reasons it is known as the core sectors so in total they comprise or they contribute 40.27% to the total weightage uh, of the total weightage of the items that are there in the index of industrial production so remember this index of industrial production it is one of the measure to uh, in it is one of the measures to understand the production in the industrial sector industrial sector right so there are um, uh, some in the, uh, indexes as you all know there is consumer price index uh, wholesale price index so in this way these are to measure the uh, increase in prices so whereas index in industrial production it is used to measure the change of production production changes in the industrial industrial sector or for that matter industrial production so these eight core sector they comprise or they weigh 40.27% uh, in the total weight of the overall items that are there in the index of industrial production so those eight sectors we will see the eight core sectors and their respective weightage uh, in the iip index of industrial production so first one is coal so it is its weightage is 10.33% uh, crude oil 8.98% uh, 
weightage natural gas 6.88 percentage refinery products 28.04 percent so this is the this uh, in the overall core sector industries this industry refinery products it has the highest weightage in the in the total eight core sectors of industry right next one is fertilizers 2.63 percent right so this fertilizer sector it has the least weightage least weightage right so the refinery products it has the highest weightage and the fertilizers it has the least weightage next one is steel industry steel it it is the it ha, its contribution or its weightage is 17.92 percent so it holds the third place third highest place next one is the cement cement industry and the last one is electricity it holds the second highest weightage when it comes to index of industrial production right so its uh, weightage is 19.85 percent so remember these eight core industries and their respective share in the industri index of industrial production right now we will understand the industrial growth trends in india right so since independence india has witnessed various stages of industrial growth so now we will study about those stages broadly we can understand uh, the growth of uh, or we can say trends in growth of industry in three sub categories or three sub stages so first stage is initial phase that is between 19 during 1950s and 1960s so during the early decades after the independence of india so the focus was on building self reliant and industrial base throughout through state led planning and investment so especially the second five year plan it focused on the building of uh, or establishing of heavy industries heavy industries so this is the this is the establishment of heavy industries is the major focus of the second five year plan so that was the focus in the initial stages so the government also implemented a mixed economy model with the prominent role for the public sector so many of the important industries they have been uh, we can say reserved reserved for the government only right so the industrial policy of 1955-56 this also emphasizes the same so the government the role of driving the uh, industrial sector it has be been given to the uh, the government only so in this way the government or we can say the economy in india it has taken the route of socialism or we can say socialist model has been adopted as the uh, we can say the prominent role of prominent nature of the economy and the government has took lot of interest in driving the industrial sector right so in this stage industrial growth was steady but not rapid so with the emphasis was on import substitution and the protectionist policies so the major emphasis here was on import substitution so it was decided that we should reduce the imports and whatever the items we are reduce uh, we are importing is industries have been established in that area to uh, substitute those import uh, im i mean importing items industries have been established in that arena so however this could not be much uh, successful and uh, there were lot of problems uh, i mean they were majorly the public sector enterprises whatever they have been or public sector undertakings or public sector enterpri enterprises they have suffered from inefficiency inefficiency so we will study about um, uh, later i mean this aspect in the later classes so there were lot of problems uh, we have to face a lot of problems because uh, because of the nature of we can say economic system we have adopted we were traveling toward traveling toward the socialist model of growth or we can say socialist model of development so it has faced a lot of problems right so next next stage is acceleration stage during the 1970s and the 1980s 
so this uh, period saw a increased industrialization marked by the green revolution in the agricultural sector so the agriculture sector has witnessed the green revolution so impressed or influenced by that the industrial sector ha- has also seen some improved growth rates right so the government continued to invest in large scale industries including steel cement and engineering to support infrastructure development and to meet growing domestic demand so however the inefficiencies in the public sector especially the sickness sickness in the industries and their subsequent their close down or shut down the government has decided to sh- uh, shut down some industries however to run those industries we have to invest a lot of funds so that they can be alive so in this way there was there is a lot of sickness in the uh, public sector and enterprises and also there was bureaucratic red tape and lack of competition all these have in- hindered the industrial uh, growth so generally we call this scenario as the license license quota and permit raj permit raj so uh, if the pi- private sector or pi- private player if uh, they want to start an industry they have to <coughs> seek the permission of the government only after the per- permission of the government they can start an industry however the permission is uh, we can say it is there are factors like bureaucratic hurdles so there was we can say rent seeking to give the permission for the private sector to establish an industry however uh, the quotas were there only this uh, private company can start these many industries it cannot start uh, not more than those number of industries so there were quotas also so there were permits for everything you have to take permit before starting as industry and also you have to get the license so all these factors combined led to a bad combination and uh, at uh, at uh, one side there is sickness in uh, sickness in problem public sector enterprises at the at, uh, at the second side or the other side there is problems for the private sector so through the license quota and permit raj so there was lot of rent seeking there was corruption and all this led to a uh, slump in the industrial sector in the country so on this background the industrial production has we can say slump and uh, one famous uh, we can say uh, the uh, academist call it as hindu growth uh, hindu gro- growth rate because the growth rate overall growth rate growth rates have slumped in this period so he famously termed it as the hindu rate of growth so generally the growth rate was hovering between 2 to 4% of the 4% whereas we were targeting 6 to 9% growth rates during that period through the five year plans right next is uh, so on this background so the liberalization has to take place and the new economic reforms have been uh, implemented in the country under the leadership of P V Narasimha Rao he was the prime minister of the country and uh, Manmohan Singh Dr Manmohan Singh he was the finance minister so under their uh, leadership the economic reforms have been implemented the country implemented in the country during uh, 1990s so they have given good results we could see after that we could see increased growth rates so at some times the growth rate has crossed more than 9% also so in this way there is increase after the implementation of we can say liberalization privatization and globalization generally it is cl- uh, called as the globalization uh, they are called as the economic reforms in the country right so this period it witnessed a surge in the industrial growth rates driven by increased competition technological advancements and access to global markets so industries such as information technology telecommunications automobiles and the pharmaceuticals they have experienced rapid progress in the country especially the sectors like information technology automobiles we can say india it is india is a leader now in automobiles 
information technology and also in pharmaceuticals so we could achieve some i mean uh, development in certain sectors of the economy right so however still there are challenges including infrastructure ba- bottleneck bottlenecks regulatory hurdles and the disparities in regional development so still there are problems in the industrial sector right now we will understand try and understand the structural change in the manufacturing output in the country right so if we understand the sectorial composition of the manufacturing uh, manufacturing output in the country right so the data from the annual survey of industries and the national accounts of statistics it reveal these to rev- uh, reveal the composition of manufacturing uh, output by sector wise so in 1950s and 1960s textiles and agro agro based industries and basic metals these were the dominant sectors in india's uh, manufacturing output reflecting the agrarian uh, economy country's agrarian nature or agrarian uh, based economy and import uh, substitution industrialization strategy these two things have been realized first one is the economy was agrarian based agrarian based and the effort was import substitution import substitution so these were the predominant features during this period during the initial decades of the after the independence right next there has shift occurred in sectoral contributions right so if we see the uh, textiles industry so that share of textiles in india uh, in the manu- uh, manufacturing output declined from around 40% during 1950s to less than 15% recent years so this is a significant change in the textile outputs contribution in the country right so while the sectors like automobiles electronics and pharmaceuticals they witnessed substantial growth so whereas the contribution of uh, industries like te- textiles that has declined other sectors like automobiles ph- pharmaceuticals engineering goods their contribution has increased substantially right so this structural st- change it reflects the diversification of india's manufacturing base and its transition towards high value added industries right so this is the major change that we can see right so if we see the impact of economic reforms that have been occurred during 1990s and 1991 so the liberalization reforms that have started in 1991 they played a pivotal role in reshaping the india's manufacturing sector so the efforts were like reduction in trade barriers increased foreign uh, investment both foreign direct investment and indirect investment and technological advan- advancements they spurred growth in sectors like it communications automobiles and pharmaceuticals right so the share of uh, it industry share of manufacturing output increased from negligible levels in the 1980s to over 77% in the re- uh, recent years so this highlights the transformative e- uh, impact of economic reforms in india's manufacturing landscape right so however there are regional variations so states like maharashtra gujarat tamil nadu and karnataka they have emerged as the manufacturing hubs whereas other states like bihar uh even for that matter jharkhand and uh, many of the northeastern states they have still lacking in industrial development whereas these states like maharashtra gujarat tamil nadu and karnataka they are attracting lot of investments right so even if you see even today also they are the leading states when it comes to industrial production right next is employment trends if we understand so these structural changes in manufacturing output they are often reflected in the employment trends also right uh the traditional industries like textile industry sugarcane industry they continue to employ significant number of workforce whereas the modern industries they require fewer workers because they are mostly technology based 
technology based and they are capital in- intensive industries capital capital intensive industries so generally the capital intensive industries they tend to be less labor intensive they are less labor intensive so it is vice versa the relation is vice versa so the industry is way uh, if the industries are labor intensive the requirement of capital is uh, less there so whenever the industries are uh, capital intensive the proportion of labor will be lesser there so the modern modern industries mostly they are capital intensive so they will be employing less number of people right so this is the one of the important trends so the modern industries in this way they contribute significantly to gdp driving the overall economic growth and development however their contribution is uh, when in, in terms of employment it is lower slightly lower so because of this reason the whatever the growth that is occurring we also call it as a jobless growth jobless growth so we will understand it more about the jobless growth in the when we discuss the main topics so because of the increasing uh, share of service sector also when it comes to the industrial sector high end industry because of the growth in highest industry uh, and not in the we can say low skilled manufacturing sectors the jobless growth in india we can see i mean we can see the scenario of jobless growth in india right we will understand about uh, this uh, arena when we discuss the main topics right right we will also see the changes in organized and un- unorganized uh, sector and their changing contribut- contributions to the industrial sector so if we see the definition and classification the organized sector comprises the enterprises with regular statistics and reporting so these uh, industries uh, i mean industries when they report to the government about various statistics yearly or uh, quarterly they are known as organized industries or they are in the organized sector so generally the government has given some we can say leeway to small industries i mean the industries which are employing lesser number of people so it has government has given or exempted them from the certain obligations like reporting with statistics etc etc so that they need not be burdened burdened because one thing they are small and they are also employing less number of people and if we Uh, say that you have to comply with all these things like uh, reporting etc so it will be a burden on them and they may not the meet all these burden some requirements their cost of production will increase so they may not comply with all these aspects so in this way some leeway is given to these industries so those industries are known as the unorganized sector unorganized sector right so i mean i mean to keep on uh, to uh, keep uh, to keep on these industries so that they will be provide employment to the people so the burden has been reduced on these industries uh, when it comes to compliance and etc so these industries are generally known as the unorganized sector whereas if the industries they are uh, i mean informing the government or reporting to the government about various statistics uh either yearly or quarterly those industries are called as they are in the organized sector right so these i mean the uh, they will be reporting the government to the annual survey of uh, industries for registered manufacturing right so in contrast the unorganized sector industries or enterprises they do not report or there is no regulation of activities or data collection so here data collection is there through the annual annual survey of industrial industries for registered manufacturing right so this is the difference between the organized sector and unorganized sector so contribution to the gdp if we see the unorganized construction activities 
they typically contribute to over 50% of the domestic product in the construction sector right so according to the available data if you see the unorganized manufacturing accounts for 53% more than 53% of manufacturing value added uh, in the 1950s uh, 1950s and 51 declining to 30% approximately 30% in the 2007 and 8 so if we see the manufacturing the organized sector is dominating organized sector is dominating however the unorganized sector sector's contribution is not less so it is hovering around 31 percent still this is a very big number many number of companies are organized i mean they are operating in unorganized category right so for if we see the from the perspective of economy the organized sector if the all the industries come into the organized sector that will be good for the economy however still majority of the industries they are they are remaining in unorganized sector only right so if we see the employment dynamics for the organized sector and unorganized sector so the unorganized manufacturing sector it employs the majority of the industrial labor force indicating its a significant role in providing employment opportunities so if we see the contributions with respect to employment so the unemployed uh, un unorganized manufacturing sector it is employing the majority of the industrial labor force right so in this way it is very very important to the economy the unorganized sector right so it also contributes substantially to the increment in manufacturing employment over the years so the extra employment is generated it is mostly contributed the incremental increasing the employment it is mostly contributed by the unorganized sector only right so uh, another way if we see meanwhile the employment generation in organized sector or organized ma manufacturing it remained uh, relatively stagnant so employment generation is not happening in the organized sector it is happening in the unorganized sector only so we can say it is a bad signal for the economy because the employment generation should happen in the organized sector not in the unorganized sector if we see in the long term so the unorganized sector still it is playing a very very important role when it comes to the economy of the country in terms of not only contribution to the gdp but also in terms of employment generation right so if we observe the changes in these uh, organized and unorganized sectors over the time so at independence the unregistered manufacturing sector it was larger than the registered manufacturing sector so the unorganized sectors was a big uh, when we compare it to the organized sector during the independence right so there has been a consistent increase in the share of registered manufacturing reflecting a structural uh, shift over time right so it suggests a deepening of imbalance within the manufacturing sector with the registered manufacturing dominating in terms of value added so there is a gradual decline in the share of unorganized manufacturing and uh, the concurrent rise in the share of registered manufacturing indicating a changing industrial landscape so when it comes to value added there is i mean the trend is good it is shifting uh, from the unorganized sector to organized sector so it is more for the organized sector however if we see the value added it is increasing however if we see the employment generation employment generation so the it is not happening that much in the organized sector it is happening in the unorganized sector organized sector so this is not at all a good sign so when value added is increasing more in organized sector the contribution in employment also should increase in the organized sector only 
so, but it is not uh, not happening like that so the whatever the employment increase uh, employment inc- increase is happening that is happening in the unorganized sector so in this way there is an imbalance <coughs> and it will lead to economic and wealth in- inequalities in the long run in the country so almost it is happening if we see the recent, uh, recent reports like Ox- oxfam report so the trend is clearly visible so the income and wealth inequalities are increasing incre- increasing at a faster rate uh, in india also so this is not at all a good trend right so apart from that there is another classification <coughs> that is formal and informal right have uh, i hope you have understood the clar- uh, classification of organized sector and unorganized sector organized sector is it is informing or reporting to the government in fo- uh, in the <coughs> in the form of annual survey of industries so those indus- ind- industries which are not reporting the, uh, to the government through the annual survey of industries those industries are categorized as unorganized sector so another classification is there formal and informal sector so the formal uh, sector is generally where there is an agreement where there is an agreement between the employer and the employee so that is the formal sector and uh, when this contract we can say formal contract is absent between the employer and the employee it is the informal sector so if we see it is more than 90 uh, 90% the informal sector is more than 90% so it is less than 10% the formal sector is less than 10% so here you can see a huge difference in the formal and the informal sector so generally the informal sector is employees are uh, less than or equal to 20 so he, uh, here if the employees are uh, less than or equal to 20 in an organization generally it is a rem- it will remain as an informal sector so whereas if the employees are more than 20 it comes under the uh, formal we can say formal organization or formal sector so here you can understand the number of industries that have employees less than 20 percent there are many number of industries their contribution is huge so because they are remaining in the informal sector this is also not good for the economy because uh, the employees who are employed here they lack the security of tenure secure security of employment that is not available to the employees who are employed here also they are devoid of benefits like uh, insurance or we can say sick leaves etc so all these benefits are not there for the employees who are employed here right so many industries try to be in the informal sector so that they could not give more uh, they could not give more securities to the employees so in this way there are lot many problems uh, when we discuss the main topics we will further devolve into this arena also so for now you remember uh, this classification including organized and unorganized sector you also remember the classification of formal and informal sector right so the economy right now is way ahead dominated by the informal sector approximately 90 percent of the employees or we can say industries are in the informal sector only approximately 10 percent that are there in the formal sector next we will try and understand the sickness of the industries especially the small scale industry we can also discuss the uh, uh, in the msme however uh, we have seen that there is sickness in the industries especially the public sector enterprises so however similarly there is uh, sickness in the public i mean small scale industries also <coughs> generally we call this trend as the dwarfism in the small scale industries because the government has given certain benefits to the small scale industry because they are providing very important thing that is they are generating employment in the economy so because of that reason they have given some benefits so to keep on getting those benefits the industries the small scale industries they remained small they remained small because there is no incentive to grow them 
to uh, for them to to grow big so once they grow big i mean for example there are many incentives or we can say uh, liberal aspects are there when the total number of employees uh, in the in a company that is less than 20 so once the number of employees reach more than 20 they have to provide some benefits to the employees so and also there are certain tax breaks for the small industries so once they grow big there will be no such tax breaks so to keep on getting those tax breaks uh, breaks or those benefits they remain the industries they tend to remain uh, small to in order to access those benefits so in this way the industries could not grow bigger so in this way there is a disparity and one side there are few big industries one side there are few number of big industries on the other side there are many number of small industries right so the india there is a peculiar case of absence of absence of middle industries or we can say middle sized industries industries we will also study about this one when we discuss the mains related topic for now you remember that and one side there are very big industries those industries are very few in number on the other side there are many number of small industries because there are certain benefits for the small industries so to keep on accessing those beneficiaries uh, sorry those benefits they tend to be uh, rem they tend to be remain small in order to access those benefits so in this way they are unable to grow further as big industries so there is a peculiar case in india that is absence of medium sized industries however they are very very crucial for the industry however there is an absence of medium sized industries in india right so we call this phenomenon as the dwarfism in the industrial or dwarfism in the micro uh, micro medium and small scale industry or also the small scale industries right so we also have to address this peculiar situation right so apart from that there is sickness in the small scale industries so the causes we will try to understand the causes of that sickness first one is lack of finance so there is a lack of finance uh, sufficient finance for them for those industries for the required investment investment so there is a lot of problems in accessing institutional credit so institutional credit they are unable to access so this is one of the problems next is poor production policies so the policy of the government the government is unable to provide a good policy product good production policy for these industries so this is also another problem next one is marketing challenges so the marketing it is a very very big problem for these industries because they have to compete with the big industries big industries also there are associate pro associated problems like transportation branding so these uh, industries often suffer these industries suffer in brand building so they uh, there is a lack of brand for these industries however the big industries they are, they have their own brands and it becomes very difficult for them to compete with these big industries uh, for the market next is human resource constraints so the skilled labor is uh, not available to these industries there is a industry academics gap you know so the supply of skilled labor or we can say skilled manpower is absent in this sector so apart from that there are other problems like obsolete technology lead to technology in this uh, sector so the whatever the machinery is used in these industries that uh, machinery is outdated and uh, there are problems in getting the technologically advanced machinery advanced machinery because of uh, it is high cost and uh, the credit is not easily available to these industries so because of all these reasons so combined uh, they are facing lot of problems we will further understand about this issue when we discuss the msme sector in the country and also we will delve uh, delve upon the possible solutions to address the sickness in the 
small scale industry in the country right now we will see uh, some of the questions that are asked from this top uh, in the previous years examinations first question it is asked in 2015 right the question is in the index of eight core industries which one of the following is given the highest way so among the four options given here which one of them is uh, holding the highest share so first uh, in the total eight categories we have seen refineries has the refineries has the highest we can say share uh, however the refineries is not mentioned here so we have seen the fertilizers it holds the very minor share so the electricity generation it holds the overall if you see it is the second place it is in the second place so in the given list it holds the highest share the electricity generation its uh, share is approximately 19 percentage right next third contribution is next uh, next highest contribution comes from the steel production sector right next question uh, it is asked in 2012 the question is in india in the overall index of industrial production iip indicators of eight core industries have a combined weightage of 37.990 so at that time the uh, the weightage was uh, 37 percent now it is increased to approximately 41 percent we have seen that so it keeps on whenever changes are made the uh, the share of the overall share of the core industries it's keep on changing now it has increased up to 41 percent approximately 41 percent so which of the following are among the those eight core industries so list of industries has given the examiner is asking you to identify which of them are included in the uh, core sector so cement is there we have seen fertilizers are there natural gas is there refinery products are there textiles is not a part of the part and parcel of the core sector industry so the correct option is option c one two three four are part of the core industry not the fifth one textiles is not the part of core industries right right so these are uh, some of the questions that are asked previously right so see all for today thank you thank you for joining the class see you next time until then have a good day right see you next time